Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my June reading wrap up. June was, I think, a pretty solid month. Like I had a couple of weeks where I couldn't really finish anything or find something that I liked, but I think overall I feel like I'm more like myself than I was pr previously, but I think also I'm like starting to just come to terms with the fact that I'm not going to read at the same speed that I did before, which again, totally fine. But now that I've sort of like almost adjusted expectations for myself, I think it makes my reading experience a lot more enjoyable. So the first book I finished this month was Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. And this is a fantasy book and it's the first book in a series. And it's a book that I have had on my radar since it came out because like immediately people were raving about it. Uh, but I was slightly hesitant to pick it up because it was the first book in a series. I'm don't do like super great with series or I like to wait until a series is farther along or closer to completion before I start reading it because I uh, don't like cliffhangers. A lot of times like when you get series that like are very dependent on the next books in the series and then like the quality starts dipping towards the end it makes like the entire experience kind of unsatisfactory. So I was basically like waiting a little bit to see one what the reviews were going to be like and also to see sort of like what future books were going to be like but someone and I don't remember who it was it might have been Deboki mentioned in their sort of review of it that this book actually stands on its own quite well and you don't really need the future books in the series like there are a couple of like general loose threads but overall the book stands on its own as a whole which is something that personally I prefer in my books that sit in a series. So if you like me are also someone who's kind of interested in this book but have been holding off on it because it's the first in a series, I can also like confirm that this book feels like a whole story in and of itself and it isn't going to be like dependent on you to continue on with the series if you don't want to. So this is a book where you are following four different perspectives and it mainly follows like a couple of weeks I believe leading up to the winter solstice of this specific year where this like major event is supposed to happen. So Rebecca Roanhorse has said that this book and series is based on like a pre-Columbian America and is sort of based on some of those like mythologies, ideologies, and things like that and events that have occurred. And so this is a book where like a plot synopsis is not really going to do you much good because the plot isn't really the point of the book. This is one of those things where it's like I recognize that I'm sort of the target audience for this book but it's not a book for everyone because this is very much a character driven book and so if you like plot focused fantasy books then this is not going to be your jam but if you like character focused fantasy books then this might actually be something worth picking up. I found all four perspectives of this book to be like really really fascinating and to find their storylines to be really well developed. Um, There is like one storyline specifically of one of the priestesses or priests I don't actually know if they call them priestesses but basically like her sort of perspective is the smallest of the all of them and I actually found her to be like a really interesting character and would have loved more from her point of view but I also understand why we got less of her compared to the other characters but I honestly like really really enjoyed every single perspective and every single timeline sort of happening in this book which is for me very rare usually there's like one or more that I don't like um, but in this case I really enjoyed the entire book altogether. I will say I don't believe I understood everything that was happening here but I feel like that's just generally what happens when I'm reading fantasy and science fiction like I don't think my brain always fully comprehends the world building behind this stuff because I don't read a lot of it so I just think feel like my brain isn't trained to pick up on that stuff but again if you're someone who really enjoys character focused fantasy books this one is really good in my opinion and I again feel like this is a complete story on its own but I'm also really excited to see where this series moves in the future. So yeah I think I gave this a four out of five stars. It was a really enjoyable experience overall and I was very surprised by how much I enjoyed it especially because I was slightly worried that it would was going to be overhyped for me uh, but it actually was I feel like perfectly hyped in my opinion. Next I listened to the audiobook of Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. This is a memoir and Michelle Zahner is a musician. She's part of the band Japanese Breakfast. This is a memoir about her experiences growing up um, but also with her dealing with the grief of losing her mother. She is half Korean half American and so she talks about a lot of different things in this book. Part of it is just sort of like a memoir of growing up um, and about her like sort of joining this band and discovering music and all that stuff but it begins sort of with this 
essay or chapter it was originally written as an essay in the new yorker about her like being in h mart and her crying in h mart because it like provided this sort of connection to her mom and her, her korean side uh, that she doesn't really get or experience otherwise and sort of how a lot of her connection to her Korean side of her life comes through food and it's like a really beautiful essay um, if I can find it I'll link it down in the description so you can check it out if you're interested it also gives you a pretty good sense of sort of like the writing style obviously and things like that but I also think that that sort of like experience of being someone of like an immigrant background or things like that or the child of immigrants or anything like that um, of food and sort of the words were around food being your main connection to your culture. It's definitely a thing that I feel personally, um, especially as someone who doesn't speak the language that my parents speak. And as someone who like hasn't been back to India in a very long time, like it feels like food is like the main connection that I get to my culture and my background. And she definitely discusses all of those things in there as well. And she talks about like her experiences being mixed race, obviously, um, and even just like how her appearance and her life was like when she would visit Korea, how people would comment on it, how people would like kind of look at her wondering sort of like what was happening there because they could tell she wasn't Korean. And so she would have to explain often that she was half Korean, half white. And she also talked about the fact that like when she was traveling in Korea with her mom, Korean people could like sort of recognize that there was a relation there. But then when she's like traveling by herself without her mom around anymore, her people can't really place her as Korean anymore. Like when she's in Korea itself and sort of like that sort of dissonance that happens and things like that. And these are all like experiences that just feel so very relevant to anyone who is the child of immigrants here in the United States or I'm sure in other Western worlds as well. Um, but sort of like that disconnect that you feel between your home culture um, or your parents' home culture and things like that, but also kind of the disconnect that you feel here in the United States. So yeah, it's a really beautiful, really moving memoir. I will say like I wasn't completely locked into every single story that she was telling um she also is very good at like not painting herself as being like this perfect kid like she talks about the fact that she was you know mean to her parents at different times and fights that they've gotten into and stuff like that which is very much always appreciated by me when people are sort of like willing to be open and vulnerable like that and she doesn't even paint her mom as being like this perfect parent or anything like that but I think it really is just like a true sort of wrestling with and grappling with her relationship and her life growing up and sort of what she's going to do now that her mom's no, lo no longer around. The next book I finished was Sorrowland by River Solomon. This is a book that was actually sent to me by the publishers and it's a book that I sort of like had on my radar but I wasn't planning on picking up immediately but since it was sent to me I was like you know this is like intriguing enough that I think I'm going to give it a try. So in this story you are following this character named Vern who has escaped from basically this like cult that her and her family has been a part of. When she escapes she is pregnant and she eventually gives birth to twins and so she is basically on the run and is also hoping to raise her kids sort of like without the influence of the outside world. And so the beginning of the book you are mainly following her as she is like in the forest trying to survive and also trying to escape because she's being hunted down by the people who run this cult. But also you learn that like someone that she knew in the cult has also escaped and so she is kind of hoping to try to find her way to this person as a potential help or lifeline outside of this world. Uh, but also it's just about like her survival and her children's survival leaving this compound and trying to figure out how to exist in this world that they were never a part of originally. But it's not a straightforward sort of like contemporary story. It, it does have like sort of this science fiction element to it that I don't want to uh, talk about really because I think that the way that they reveal that and sort of the way to talk about it might be too close to spoilers that I personally am comfortable with. So yeah, I will just say like if that premise sounded interesting to you, but you're not a science fiction person at all, uh, just know that there are science fiction elements in this book as well. So this book is honestly like really, really fascinating. The main character in here, Vern, is black and the cult that she's a part of is this like sort of like religious compound thing where they actually like teach that like white people are evil and that they shouldn't be trusted and things like that. And they like work to what they say is they work to sort of create this sort of independent life from them. And so they do things like teach like history in regards to like how black people were affected in the United States. So like in one sense you're like oh this is like a really good thing where they're creating sort of this independent life. But then you also see you know the cult 
aspects of it where you're like, oh, this is also not really a good thing and things like that. So you kind of get like flashes in time as like Vern is escaping where she like remembers things that happened to her growing up in as a part of this cult and on this compound and things like that. So even though it has also, again, the science ele- science fiction element to it, it also, I feel like, will appeal to people who read contemporary fiction because it also ties in sort of like the real history of the United States and things that have happened here. It kind of talks about the actual experiences of Black Americans. It's a really like atmospheric book and it also like takes on a lot. Um, this is not a very long book and so I will say like some of the topics are feel like they're kind of just like mentioned and they don't like delve super super deep into it but it obviously talks about things like motherhood um, and being a Black mother here in the United States. It talks about like trauma and mental health. I will say I think the first half of the book is significantly stronger than the last half of the book. In the end I think I would rate this like a three and a half star book because it has this very like strong like almost apocalyptic feeling to it in the beginning and then a certain event happens and it's sort of the tone sort of changes and like the focus sort of changes it feels like almost a different book and it's not that that part was bad but it, there is a little bit of a disconnect there so yeah I do feel like this is a really good book and worth reading because again there's a lot of really interesting ideas that River Solomon is sort of working through here but I will say that it's a feels a little bit on the underdeveloped side um, or it's just like too many topics and so she couldn't go like really really deep into any of them but I think in the end like this was obviously like very much a book that I felt like was worth reading and I definitely was compelled to see sort of like where everything was going um, and especially like once the science fiction element starts to really take a hold and just really starts to play out it I was just like kind of intrigued to see like what they were going to do with it in the end so yeah this was really fascinating and definitely a book that I could see like being made into a movie or something like that so if it hasn't been optioned already I think it should be. Next I finished Hannah Khan Carries On by Uzma Jalaluddin. This book is just like a super fun cute contemporary romance book. Um, this author wrote the book Aisha at Last which was kind of like a loose Pride and Prejudice retelling that I read a couple of years ago and so I was very excited to see that she had a new book out. Um, this one is being described as like a very loosely inspired You've Got Mail retelling. It's not really You've Got Mail but it's close and you'll see why as I give the synopsis. So in this story you are following this character named Hannah and her parents own this halal restaurant in Canada called Three Sisters Biryani Poutine or something along those lines. And so she works at this restaurant but she actually has dreams of being sort of like a radio host. And so she actually has her own podcast where she anonymously releases these episodes talking about being a Muslim woman and her experiences and things like that. Um, and I think like the first chapter or within the first two chapters you like read a transcript of one of them and you see that she has a comment from this person named Stanley who you know is a really big fan of the podcast and they basically end up becoming sort of like online friends. So Stanley has no idea who Hannah is. She goes by a pseudonym in the podcast and Hannah has no idea who Stanley is. But they're you know begin this friendship through those comments and they you know eventually end up like texting each other and things like that. So when the story begins you see that like Hannah is working in the restaurant helping out her family uh, but the restaurant is actually isn't doing super great. They don't really get a whole lot of business and then they eventually find out that there is another halal restaurant that is going to be opening up as like major competition to them and there is a lot of concern not just from Hannah but from other people in the community that uh, this restaurant is going to begin this sort of like gentrification of their neighborhood and start pushing out the rest of of them that live there. So if you've seen the movie You've Got Mail uh, you could probably put some pieces together about <laughs> what's gonna happen in this book but I feel like that's not really supposed to be a secret like they reference You've Got Mail for a reason. So again if you've seen that movie or at least know the premise of that movie you could probably again see the pieces of what's going to be happening here but I found this to be so cute and so enjoyable. Hannah also works at a radio station in Toronto and so you see a little bit of her experiences there and about her. I think she's an intern and she works with another Indian person and you see sort of like her experiences of working at this radio station the sort of like microaggressions that she experiences and also like her trying to make her dreams come true of like hosting a radio show and what that would look like and what her dream radio scenario show would actually be like. I think that if you read the book The X Talk you 
would also potentially like this just because it also has that sort of like radio podcast element to it. And it also has this sort of like enemies to lovers sort of aspect to it as well with this rival restaurant. But yeah, I think that this was just genuinely a really fun, delightful experience. If you haven't read Aisha at last as well, I would also highly recommend this book. I feel like this author is really, really good at just doing these like really cute contemporary romance stories. The main characters of her books are always Muslim, which is nice. And if you are someone who wants contemporary romance books without sex scenes or anything like that, then this again would be a really good author to check out. So yeah, I think that this was like a perfect summer fun read. Uh, and again, if you just want something new and different in your contemporary romance books, this would be a really good author to check out. All right. And the final book that I have to talk about is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is a comic book that I loved so much. So this is one of the comics that is on the uh, AV Club's best comics of the 2010s list that I am constantly referring to and am slowly working my way through. And I'm so thankful for that list because of experiences like this where I picked up this comic that I didn't really know anything about and I just completely fell in love with it. Um, this is also a very chunky comic so I think that also has to do with why I enjoyed it so much. So in this book you are following this character named Mia and it takes place in space and there's basically like two timelines that you're following. One is following Mia while she is at boarding school and the other one is in the future from that point um, as she is working as part of this crew that goes around space sort of cleaning up various areas that are about to be like either renovated or made into something else or something along those lines. So they're basically like a cleanup crew. And so you follow her in these two timelines seeing her friendships and relationships and what her life is like at the boarding school and kind of how that impacts what she's doing at, as part of the crew. And I don't want to say anything more than that because I went into this comic completely blind and oh I just loved watching the story unfold because I didn't know what was going to happen. I think that because this book is so long it does a lot of things that other comics don't do like character development <laughs> because it has like so much space to it uh, to do those things. I realized after I read this because there's a note in the back that this started off as a web comic and so I think that also has to do with like the strength of the storyline. It was like you know released over time and done in these sections or parts and so there is like a significant growth to the characters and the storyline in a way that I don't see a lot of in sort of single issue or single volume graphic novels. There are parts of the story that made me cry. I just found it to be like really really beautiful and moving. The art style in here is really unique. There's no real like great way to describe it. It feels very like simple but not simple at the same time. Obviously like there's like a almost monochrome feeling to this book but like it has a decent amount of color to it um, and obviously like the color pal palette changes depending on like which timeline you're in um, but it's a lot of these sort of like blacks and purples and reds um, and pinks things like that. The one sort of I guess con of it, it was that it took me a while to be able to like visually distinguish who the characters are. I feel like Tilly Walden draws faces very similarly um, and so I would really have to look at the characters closely especially in the beginning to figure out who was who but again that just might be a me thing so your mileage may vary on that but that's just something I thought I would know. This is also a book that is broken up into chapters which is really nice so I just like very slowly made my way through this comic over the course of like two weeks and just read like a chapter or two every night or so and just like really enjoyed my experience with this book. This is a comic that I think would make a really great miniseries kind of like in a Watchmen sort of style. Like I know that this would never actually be option to be a series because it all takes place in space and it's way too complicated to do some of the stuff that's happening in here but the way that the characters develop and the way that the story develops it really does feel like this really beautiful miniseries. So if you are someone who kind of likes comics but has a hard time with sort of like how uh, short they can be or how fast things move then I think that this would be a really good comic to check out um, and also if you're someone who really enjoys character development over plot type stories uh, this would also be a really great comic to check out. So yeah I really really enjoyed this one. I got it from my library and I think I'm actually going to buy a copy to have on my shelves like that's how much I enjoyed it. So that is everything that I have for this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you read in the month of June that you really enjoyed and if there's anything that I read here that you've also read and you have any comments about feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well. So yeah that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.